I want to tell you a little bit about what I'll be going over in this workshop. Um, we are going to be discussing making hump molds. So a hump mold is like a hump. This has some angles, um, but a slump mold is something you slump the form into. We're going to focus on hump molds. So what you're going to be working on is actually the bottom of a plate or a bowl that is more open, okay? Um, and you are going to be creating the foot and then you'll flip it over and you'll remove it and you can work on the rim from there. Here are a couple of different versions. They can go from, I have some really simple ones in action here I'll show you. Uh, I want you to take a moment and think about all of the different shapes. Why a hump mold is great is if you want to make a, a plate or a bowl and you want a form that is a little bit more unique or asymmetrical um, and you're used to using the wheel, this is a great way to do that. And as for hand building, it allows you to have a nice volume versus working on a slab and building up the wall. So this allows that sense of volume. So this is the inside of the form. Um, here is a larger, more complicated form. And the beauty of a mold is to speed up your production. So if to hand build this form, to coil it or to slab it and make darts, takes a lot of time. So I put the time into making the mold. It still takes some time to build off of it, but I am able to produce a lot more forms in a quicker manner. That's the beauty of a mold. So you've got to put work in on the forefront. So that's a finished product. It's in its bisque form. So I'm going to talk about hump molds from simple to more complicated and discuss how to build them and what to consider when using them. Um, and then I am known for doing surface work. That's kind of something I'm is my forte. So I'm going to take these forms that are more open so you have that surface that can act like a beautiful canvas and we're going to respond to the three-dimensional form with some 2D surface development. I'll be going over some paper stencils, inlay, sgraffito, uh, and an image transfer process using commercially bought transfers from a company called Isla Transfers, and I'll get you that information. So um, we're going to talk about the development of the surface when that comes time and how it's going to work with the form and how it's going to work with food a little bit. You want to consider that. I personally make a lot of sculpture. Um, I love making pots, but a lot of my pottery is um, used as surface development for my sculptural work. So if you look up my work, you're going to see a lot more scu sculpture, but you will definitely see a lot of the surface work that I'm going to be showing you. So let's dive into things. Um, I want to just start off by talking about my clay body. Okay. Um, I'm going to be using a porcelain today, porcelain.